Good day California seismograph friends. What is happening in front of the coast of Oregon, you might ask. You might not know this, and you might not think of the word micro, when we talk about the Juan de Fuca plate. But, the Juan de Fuca plate, is just a small tectonic plate, as a matter of fact, it is the USGS, who refers to this section of the tectonic plates, as a microplate. Now this section, which is generated by the Juan de Fuca Ridge, is subducting under the northerly portion of the western side of the North American Plate. It is called the Cascadia Subduction Zone and named after the explorer, Mr. Juan de Fuca. It was named in 1787 by the maritime fur trader, Captain Charles William Barclay, whose father was the commander of the East India Shipping Company of the Pacific. You know, this real-life story is closer home than I realized. My mom used to tell me, that my great-grandfather used to sail for the East India Company. And my grandfather, sailed for the Holland America Line, as my mom was growing up. What do you know? The world is sometimes smaller than you think. But why is the Juan de Fuca plate, so important for us? Well, this little section, has been responsible for some rather large events in the far past. Since the beginning of this week, we have seen almost 100 earthquakes rattle this section of the Cascadia Fault, with several of these earthquakes as large as magnitude of 5.8. The question is, how likely is it, that this plate is going to produce a big earthquake? Here are the facts. The Juan de Fuca plate, has not seen a bigger quake, than a 6.8 in this region since you and I were born. So, does that mean then that we are safe? Honestly, no, not so fast, because some sections of the R.O.F. have had earthquakes as large as a magnitude 8 and above, as we stroll back through Earth history. These larger quakes, are known to potentially trigger large tsunamis, since their location is in the Pacific Ocean. Thus here at California Seismograph we always refer back to our, TIP acronym, which stands for, we teach, about quakes, and instruct to be prepared. So, here is your tip for today. I just had a conversation with, one of our California seismograph volunteers, about some of the worries that this movement, at this section of our coast, is causing people to lose their precious sleepover. Yes, our answer is to be prepared. But at the same time, it means, that with good preparation, we also need to have good common sense. And that means, that when the night falls, and the body needs its rest, you are far better off to get your rest, than to lay awake and worry. Simply said. If you worry too much, and don't get your proper sleep, you might not be ready to deal with a possible evacuation when the moment is there. Now here is something you might not remember, but may I give you some much needed peace of mind. In 2008, more than 600 quakes rattled the Cascadia Ridge, in just over a week's time, but no large earthquake ever came about. As a matter of fact, I did some further investigating, and this section of the Cascadia Fault, has never in our measured history, seen an earthquake above a magnitude 6.8. And the biggest recorded earthquake ever to hit the Cascadia Fault, was not larger than a 7.3, which did not generate a significant tsunami. Here is another good fact to know. Although the percentage, to see a greater quake on the Cascadia Fault Zone is at about 31%, the potential increase of this swarm, to be triggering a larger quake in this area, is not significantly increasing this percentage number. Now, should one, who lives near to the coast be prepared? Yes of course you should, but so should you if you go drive your car in the snow during the winter. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Please jump in the comments below, and let us know what you think. Thank you for your support, and please give us a thumbs up, and subscribe if you have not done so already. Remember, there is no better way to overcome a potential disaster than to be prepared, 